If Genryu Sayamamoto had to fight the members of Squad Zero individually, how many of them could he defeat? Squad Zero consists of five powerful individuals with a combined power which was said to have surpassed the Gotei 13. This divine division consists of Ichibe Hyosube, their leader, Oetsu Nimaya, Tenjiro Kirinji, Kiryo Hikifune, and Senjimaro Shutara. They guard the Soul King and each possess a piece of his power through the Oken, their hair and bones. This not only makes them the key to the royal palace dimension, but is implied to have infused them with a tremendous amount of Reatsu, as we had seen with the release of Senjimaro's Bankai. On the other hand, we have the former general of the Gotei 13, Shigekuni Genryu Sai Yamamoto, who made himself into a monster by his own strength. For a thousand years, Genryu Sai remained unsurpassed in the Gotei 13, wielding Ryujin Jaka, which is not only the strongest fire type Zanpakuto, but also the strongest Zanpakuto itself in the Gotei 13. With even Sosuke Aizen ranking Ryujin Jaka's Shikai above his own Kanzen Saimin ability. Despite his enormous spiritual pressure, which was said to be a far cry above the great nobles, Sosuke Aizen still displays complete shock when faced with Ryujin Jaka's power, which can summon a torrent of power to lock Aizen, Gin, and Tosen in a cage for the duration of multiple battles in fake Karakura town, with Genryu Sai assuring his captains and lieutenants that it will take them a while to escape. When compared to the exceptional Reiatsu of the great nobles like Byakuya Kuchiki, Genryu Sai was said to be on the outskirts of common sense. And even without the aid of his Ryujin Jaka's flames, he's a grand master of Zanjutsu or sword fighting, a grand master of Kido or Shinigami magic, with a similar level of expertise in Hakuda or hand-to-hand -hand combat, being able to shatter powerful souls to pieces with a single blow. His Bankai, his ultimate power, Zankonatachi, has four main abilities. Ease, which concentrates the power of his flames into the edge of the blade, and blows away whatever it touches without leaving a trace. West, which cloaks him in heat as hot as the sun's core, 15 million degrees Celsius, and while most people seem to be concerned with the tremendous heat, the most deadly aspect of this phase is that the fire cloak itself is Genryu Sai's Reiatsu. Next, we have Zankanatachi South. Which allows him to summon the bones of the dead whom he has slain as an extension of his own will. And Zankanatachi North, Tenchi Kaijin, Heaven and Earth End in Ashes. A single ranged slash which destroys his opponent. And just to demonstrate Genryu Sai's tremendous power, the 8th Kenpachi Soya Azashiro was able to summon enough energy to threaten the structural integrity of the Dangai Precipice World. The same Dangai Precipice World which could withstand the explosion of all the matter from the Valley of Screams. The Valley of Screams being a whole dimension to itself. And Captain Zaraki, who could withstand and produce greater power than this later in their fights, was seen as a weakling from Royd and Yachiru's perspectives, with Genryu Sai's armor straight up vaporizing Royd's blade upon contact. The same fighter who no diffed Zaraki could not touch Genryu Sai's armor, and even from a distance was threatened by Genryu Sai's Bankai presence. Now, how does this compare to Squad Zero? Concerning combat speed, since Genryu Sai could go toe to toe with Royd, who had 70 to 80% of Yuha's stat, and Yuha is able to maintain pace with Ichibe, Genryu Sai's speed would also rank within the boundaries of Squad Zero. And if we use Koryashiki's statement that he can rival Squad Zero, with Genryu Sai being the strongest captain for a thousand years, then he becomes a threat for characters like Tenjiro Kirinji and Kiryo Hikifune, mostly owing to the fact that we don't really know their true Shikai and Bankai powers. And since the strongest ability to display Played by Kiryo so far is the Cage of Life, which takes a while to prepare. While they would have comparable power, we just don't know enough about their abilities to say for sure how they would perform. In Oetsu's case, if they have comparable speed and power, base to base his Zanpakuto is stronger, since Sayafushi in base would have stronger cutting power than a base Ryujin Jaka, and in their higher forms I would lean more towards a character who seems to have more tricks with the Zanpakuto, and a deeper understanding overall. Since deeper understanding of Zanpakuto can grant the user greater power, in a battle of strength, I would lean more towards Oetsu Nimaya. As for Senjimaru Shitara, since she can produce infinite numbers of threads and can mold her Bankai in infinite ways, essentially producing any kind of power, 
If they were supposed to be comparable in overall stats, her infinite abilities would give her the advantage. And as for Ichibe Hyosube, he has power over everything which he named, including Shikai, Bankai, Zanpakuto, and all the phenomena which takes place in Soul Society. In just base form, he could already cut through Genryusai's name or that of Ryujin Jaka, rendering them powerless. Or if he gets really serious, he could immobilize Genryusai and then erase him from existence with Futen Taisatsu Ryu. And his power is not just ink, which can simply be vaporized, it is black itself which he can shape or mold. He can even create solid objects from it. And with the oldest Bankai or Shinuchi, Ichibei can grant new names to Genryu Sai or simply modify the entire space according to his will by naming it. So you can very well argue that Genryu Sai can somehow rival Squad Zero in terms of power, but simultaneously it doesn't seem that way. Ichibei can see the entire universe of Bleach, and in both the anime and manga they observe Genryu Sai's defeat. And despite Yuha coming to Royal Palace with Genryu Sai's Bankai, Squad Zero made it very clear that none of them, including Yuha, would be able to escape the Cage of Life. As their spirit energy would be trapped and absorbed by the branches. And Yuha, who used a different means besides spirit energy to escape, surprised the members of Squad Zero. And later, Oeso explained that all the power which they used so far doesn't even amount to the true strength of a single Squad Zero member. And even Ichibei in all this wisdom and Senjimaru with her intellect which rivals Kisuke and Mayuri both expected the Cage of Life to hold Yuha Baha and didn't think the power he gained from defeating Genryu Sai would require any of them to use their true swords. It's also likely that Kuriyashiki only rivals the Squad Zero members before they release their true swords. So while you can argue the former, I'll conclude by saying considering the latter implications, any one of the Squad Zero members when they release their true swords would have too much power for Genryu's side to handle. While you can argue for both sides, it's just strongly implied that each Squad Zero member is simply more powerful than Genryu's side. Cheers. <laughs>